So if Fully Charged is a program about the future of energy and electric cars, why am I coming to you from inside a mobile phone? I mean, what have cell phone companies got to do with the future of energy? Now, when we did an episode of Fully Charged about smart meters before, it caused quite a lot of controversy. It was a difficult subject. People got very upset. They wanted to know about whether this was an intrusion into our privacy, whether the data that was being leached out of smart meters was going to destroy our lives, almost like the matrix was taking over. So we had to think about it again and come up with an idea of how to find out exactly how these things work and what they really do. So I've come to Vodafone uh, outside Newbury. It's lovely here, lovely car parks, lovely trees, massive data center, and I want to find out exactly how smart meters work and exactly what they do. Return of the smart meter. So Tim, new technology coming into all our lives in the next sort of five to 10 years. Yep. And I posted on Google Plus, mm -hmm. just saying, what, what, what are people's opinions? What are your concerns? What are you hopeful for? But a phenomenal response, mm -hmm. a lot of different questions. And I think focusing mainly, the, most of them on, on security, people seem very nervous. Because at the moment we've got meters under our stairs, mm -hmm. so we're used to that. Yes. Whereas this new technology, is the, the, people feel there's a lot more data and who's got it and where's it going. And yes, and I think that's understandable. I think, so you know, as far as the security goes, the data that's being passed isn't really any different from, from what's being passed today with the, cupboard, the, the meter under the stairs in the cupboard. It is just a meter reading of your usage. Um, the important thing is to make sure that's secure from, from the meter point back through to the energy supplier. And one of the things we do with that is, is uh, it's digital, so all the information sent in ones and zeros. But what we do is we actually jumble those up. So before it leaves, it's actually jumbled up into gobbledygook right. uh, and then reassembled when it gets to the end of our network. Now, actually, what the energy suppliers do as well is they put another layer of security on top of that. It's very difficult to get any of that information. If you could somehow intercept it, it would just make no sense anyway. It's, you know, when I think of the, all this technology, I'm thinking, well, it's power companies. So what is Vodafone's role in that then? So this is something Vodafone will be providing, which is a communications hub. And basically, when you, when you plug this in, it, it, it sets up a HAM, which is a home area network. And that um, will then talk to your electricity meter and to your in-home display and take the information across. Um, and the WAN is the wide area network, and that's the bit that we provide. So that's, that's basically our, our, our mobile phone network. Right. And we can take the information back from there and across to the energy supplier. So, uh, so when you're taking all this data in, I mean, is it, what, what is the data? The data itself is, is really just your meter read. It may get more granular in the future, but to start off with, it will just be pretty much a monthly read of your data. Now, we don't actually store it in our network at all. We just pass it straight through to the energy companies. People need to understand the reason why the whole smart metering is, is taking place. The idea behind this is to transform uh, the way that we use power. You know, by putting a smart meter in there, that information that goes across then means that uh, you don't have an estimated bill anymore. It means that you can do uh, prepayment top-ups. It means that you can change energy, energy supplier nice and easily. Right. It's all automated. Um, it also means for some of the future stuff as well uh, that you can be offered um, time of use tariffs. So uh, at the moment, you'd pay the same amount, even when energy usage is very, very high and very expensive to produce, you pay the same as when it's less, less expensive right. to produce. It would also give the network companies themselves more information about how the energy demand is going across, across their networks, which is really important. Uh, and, and, and really, the, the final point is that the smart metering is it's the building blocks to, to the smart grid which, again, will help, help in that area. Because, I mean, presumably that's the, the driving force behind the whole movement, then, is to, is to make the, you know, create a smart grid, of which this is a, a key component. Yeah, so ultimately it would be a smart grid. I mean, in, 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 the, in the first time, and I've got a, 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 a smart meter at home, and I have a, a, an in-home display, and it's all about reducing your power. The main thing on is there is a red, amber, green light system, and uh, when all the lights are on in the house and the, the oven's on, it goes to red, and we run around and switch, switch the lights off. 
So are there kind of government level security foundations for what, where this data goes and who uses and who has access to it? Oh yes, absolutely. So, so I mean, as we are regulated by Ofcom as a, as a mobile network company, so all the energy companies are, are, are regulated by Ofgen. Once you've got your smart meter, mm -hmm. you know, can, will it be able to be renewed as, as time goes by? Yeah, and, and this is really critical. So, so you know, if you have 30 million devices out there, the last thing you want to do is, 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 is find some uh, new way of making them slightly more efficient or, or better and having to send someone out there with a dongle yes. to plug them in. So, so that's something we do already, where you have an over-the-air up, updated or upgrade service. So, yeah, I mean, another concern, which actually sounded a bit more realistic to me, which was the potential for using the data that's going through, you know, mm -hmm. completely legitimately with the permission of the, of the power companies to, to do marketing. Information could be made available which could actually help you. I mean, it could be that, that, that your fridge is running inefficiently, but you actually would like to know that your fridge is running efficiently. But what's been made very, very clear is you have to opt in for any service like that. So right. it's not something that can be offered to you without you actually saying, yes, I want it. Right. So you've got to actually tick, the, the box isn't pre-ticked, you've Absolutely. got to tick it. Yes, yeah. exactly. But I mean, the, the flip side of that, I suppose, is that, that uh, manufacturers could start thinking, once they see that this, this data-rich environment and the global level of that data, and they can see, oh, well, there's this huge peak, which the National Grid have told us about every evening, if they started to devise technology that could work around that yeah. and that, that could that could you know possibly even with batteries in a, 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 like a battery pack in a fridge yeah. so it doesn't need to be on then and it's yeah. on at night and that's when it charges up absolutely and, and this is we're starting to see this now so the smart metering conferences which which happen across the world and europe um you know in the early days that tended to be just the meter manufacturers and the utilities who were there but we're now starting to see more and more white goods manufacturers, really? so washing machine right. manufacturers. So, so yes, there's a lot of interest from them about how they're going to work with smart grids as well going forward. So, I mean, I think it's important because we've done so many negative questions, but it's, I mean, I'm very excited about the potential for this technology. I mean, where do you see it going? I mean, is, uh, presumably you're, you're really involved in it. I mean, are, what are the potential benefits that we could get from it? The whole area that, that we're involved in is actually called M2M, -M, which is machine to machine. And, and that goes right away across the range. That's not just you know, in, in, in this particular industry. Uh, a, a big driver of this is, is e-call. So across Europe, there's legislation that if a vehicle has a, an accident in the future and the airbag is deployed, it will have to uh, send a signal to say where the vehicle ha had the accident uh, and open up a voice channel for the emergency services. Right. Wow. So this is the kind of way that uh, M2M &M itself is developing. I mean, we've been doing it for, for, for a number of years. You know, the lighthouses all around... UK are controlled through M2M, -M. even some of the boys in, in, in the channels in the uh, wow. busy shipping lanes are controlled through M2M. -M. But, but more um, household items such as there's fridges that can read barcode scans as you, as you put things in and put things out and automatically order uh, as you run out. Right. Um, so yeah, I mean it's, it's an explosion really in, in, in this communication of device to device or machine to machine. Um, some people call it the internet of things. And that's something that we specialise in and have been doing for, for a number of years and to see as an incredibly huge you know, growth area. Thank you. Very, Thank very you. kind of you. Thanks yes. very much indeed. Thank you. Well, I mean, that was very interesting. I certainly learnt a lot and I think it's safe to say we don't really need to put our tinfoil hats on just yet. The thing I've really learnt about smart meters is that they could be incredibly beneficial, not just for us as individuals at home, but for the, the power generating companies and the national grid to help us use energy a little bit more efficiently and waste a lot less. I think that's probably a step in the right direction. Join us on Fully Charged next time when we'll be finding out about the British government's Green Deal.